In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions. This video is also a previous lecture, so if you feel comfortable with the material, feel free to skip on to the next section. The first thing we're going to talk about is unsaturated solutions. Now, saturated means full. When we're talking about the word unsaturated, we mean we haven't reached fullness yet. We contain less than the maximum amount of solute we can still dissolve more into the solvent. Think about salt water. If you take salt and add it into water, the salt will dissolve. As long as you can continue adding salt and it will still dissolve, we call that solution unsaturated. If you notice the particle diagram right here in the middle, all of our particles are separated. That's what dissolve means. It means we're breaking down our solute. In an unsaturated solution, all of your particles of the solute are going to be separate and dissolved. Now what do we call it if you do have more than the maximum amount and you can't dissolve anymore? That's what we call a saturated solution. So saturated means it contains the maximum amount of solute that you can dissolve. You cannot dissolve any more. Any salt that you add to the water is going to collect at the bottom. And the reason for this is because we've run out of water molecules to interact with those solute particles. One of the things we've learned before about water is water has oxygen and two hydrogens. The oxygen end is negatively charged because of its polarity and the oxygens are going to be positively charged. As it interacts with the uh, solute over here, these things are made up of pluses and minuses. So when that water uh, interacts with it, it's going to attract that solute and break it down so that this particle is going to move over here and now join with the water molecule. As soon as you've run out of available water molecules, there's nothing left to cause the solute to break down and dissolve. So that's why we end up collecting solute at the bottom of the beaker. The last type of solution is a supersaturated solution. And this is a, kind of an uncommon type of solution where you're going to have an unstable solution that contains an amount more than it's supposed to. And the way we've done this is you have to heat up a solution. We've looked at solubility curves before and we saw that on the curve as temperature increases solubility for most substances are also going to increase. So if we take our, our beaker here and we heat it to a greater temperature we can actually dissolve more stuff into it. Now as we cool it down what happens is this beaker here with the solution is containing more particles than it's supposed to. And so as you uh, add just one tiny little particle in here, what starts to happen is the solution starts to crystallize out. And all those ions that are dissolved start attracting themselves back to that one that you put in there. And so the thing is going to crystallize. It's super unstable and it's something that involves having to heat it up and cool it down. So it's not something that you really see a lot of in nature unless you tweak the conditions to the right amount. Now that we've learned how to look at solubility curves in the last video, we can take saturated, supersaturated, and unsaturated solutions and figure out whether they're one of those things by looking at the graph. The way we interpret this is if the value we're looking at is in relation to the line, if it's on the line, we're going to call that a saturated solution. I'll give you an example. Imagine we've got at 20 degrees for Ki, I tell you that there's 140 grams dissolved of Ki in that 100 grams of water. That is right on the line. That's what we would call saturated. If I said we had only dissolved 100 grams of Ki and 100 grams of water, that's what we call below the line. That's unsaturated. In fact, if we've only dissolved 100, we can still dissolve this right here we've still got 40 more grams that we can dissolve. If we somehow dissolved 160 grams in 100 uh, grams of water, that's what we call supersaturated. This is where we would have had to heat up the temperature all the way up to here, and then once we got it there, we could dissolve 160. If I let it cool back down and it's still holding that 160 grams dissolved, that would be supersaturated. Just remember that on the line is saturated, above the line is supersaturated, below the line is unsaturated. We'll go and work one final example here. 70 grams of NH4Cl 
are dissolved in 100 grams of water at 90 degrees Celsius. Is this solution unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? We're going to find NH4 on here. Once we locate that line, we're going to look what it's supposed to be at 90 degrees. We find out right here at 90 degrees, it's supposed to be 70. We go back to our problem, and we see that it tells us 70 grams is dissolved. Since 70 is what we're supposed to have at 90, and the problem tells us that we're at 70, we would call that, on the line, saturated. That's how we interpret that value. The second question tells us to look at NH3, and it says 50 grams of NH3 are dissolved in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius. Is the solution unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? We're going to find NH3. And we're going to find at 10 degrees, it's supposed to be somewhere here, right about 70, maybe a little bit less. But we look at the problem, and the problem tells us we've only dissolved 50 grams. We compare this to what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be about 70. We're only at 50. This is under the line. We would call that unsaturated.